Last week, KTM's Marvin Muskin rode to a 1-1 finish on the challenging hills at Glen Helen. Marvin Muskin has won the first moto at Glen Helen. <laughs> Meanwhile, the defending series champ Jeremy Martin experienced a miserable day at round two. They've got about five mechanics working so hard right now. Jeremy's been standing there with his fingers crossed. In the premier class, Eli Tomac once again decimated the field, earning another victory and extending his championship points lead. Eli Tomac dominates Hangtown, dominates Glen Helen. Ryan Dungey. Justin Barsha. Ken Roxon. And the rest of the field hope to find answers today at altitude. American Motocross races at a mile high, live on MAV TV. Just outside the Mile High City of Denver, Colorado, it's round three of the Lucas Oil Pro Moto Cross Championship, sanctioned by AMA Pro Racing, the True Value Thunder Valley National. Hello everyone, welcome to Lakewood, Colorado. Big crowd on hand and perfect weather for racing. Jason Wygant joined by multi-time Motocross and Supercross champion Grant Langston and Georgia Lindsay will be in the pits controlling that for us all day long. Let's give you the big picture storylines we're going to follow today here live on MAV TV. Last week in California, big mistakes for some of our title contenders. Jeremy Martin, his team could not get the bike started before the first 250 moto, and then in the second 250 moto, he was knocked down by another rider. Had to come from last in both races to finish seventh overall. Ken Roxon, your defending 450 champion. A rough opening round, and here at round two, stuck with Jason Anderson in the first lap. He finished eighth in that race. And Ryan Dungey had bike problems. He was second in the series coming in. That would drop him to sixth in last week's first moto. So he loses some points to this guy, Eli Tomac, who has won every moto this year. He's 4-0, and oh, and this is his home state race. The Colorado kid is going to be more comfortable than anyone racing at altitude. And that's really a key factor when you come here to Colorado. This track is 6,000 feet of elevation. The bikes are going to be slower, and the breathing of these athletes is going to be affected by that as well. But it's not just Eli Tomac who's comfortable in these surroundings. Grant Langston last year, Blake Baggett, Ken Roxon won the races in the 250 and 450 classes. Can some other riders step up and get their first wins today? Well, the two guys you just mentioned, Jason, ride here very well. They were the winners last year. Baggett's been riding pretty good this year. He's been knocking on the door of the podium. And our defending champion, Ken Roxon in the, the 450 class has not been on the podium. So those are two guys I'm expecting to be on the podium here pretty soon. But in the 250 class, Jeremy Martin, we talked about it, had a rough weekend last weekend at Glen Helen, but he scored very valuable championship points. Yes, he lost the points lead to Marvin, who he was tied with, but I don't think he's stressed out. This kid has nope. shown us he will rebound from bad luck and bad issues. Our 250 class motor number one will be coming up here. The riders are taking a sight lap. And earlier, Georgia Linty was able to catch up with a newcomer to this 250 class for the GoPro starting gate. And the Geico Honda of Justin Bogle has now been taking place of Christian Craig. Christian, it's great to see you back. Obviously, we normally see you in the 450 class, but you are jumping on the 250 Geico Honda. How are you doing, and, and are you ready? Yeah, uh, it feels good to be back. Um, got the call last week, came out to California, got three days on the bike, and then, uh, you know, coming straight here. But I feel good. Obviously, I... Uh, Got some qualif a good qualifying time, and then, um, yeah, I'm just looking forward to these two motos. I never raced 250 outdoors, so, you know, I'm looking forward to it. Uh, qualifying first place, obviously, times were great. Is it hard, though, when you haven't been in that racing, you know, environment for a while to jump back in? And, you know, I guess we're about to see how it's going to go. Yeah, big time. You know, you never know if you're ready until, you know, the gate drops. So um, I've been putting in my work, though. I've been doing the motos, so uh, I look forward to this first moto and see how it plays out. Well, best of luck, Christian. Thank you. Jeez, the Geico Honda team just hoping he would be a solid replacement for Bogle, and he goes out and wins the Bud Light Fast Qualifying Award. Let's see how Craig does after this. Back here at 
uh, Thunder Valley, a mile high of elevation, actually, and change, 6,000 feet. And we're watching the 250 class of Lucas Oil Pro Motocross. Here's your format. We have two motos every weekend in each class. We'll combine both moto scores in each division to determine a pair of overall winners. It's 12-round championship. This is the third of the season. Jason Wygant, Grant Langston, George Lindsay going to give you the action today. The 250 class, obviously that elevation saps the horsepower from the bikes. It's going to have a bigger impact on this class than the 450s because these bikes are slower to start with. Oh, absolutely. The 250 is struggling for all the horsepower they can get. But let's take a look at the Kawasaki track map. Like you said, Jason, we are at the Mile High City in Colorado. Drop the gate up the hill. Drag race. Basically going to come down to horsepower and technique. Hopefully you'll round that first turn, get the motorsport.com hole shot. Then a long section that goes up the hill, past the Bud Light step up. Try and soak the bike up over this little crest, get your weight back all the way to the top. Then you make a pivot, launch back down the hill. One of the hardest braking points coming down here. Sweeping left. Great passing opportunity. Inside, outside options there. Two step ups. This one, guys, trying to get up past the fly racing triple step up. And this section a little bit different. They actually cut out that little horseshoe. They'll turn and go straight down how our camera did. And then this section here, another great passing opportunity. Very choppy. That right hand that tightens up. Then this section, tight left, a little right over the crest, over probably the biggest jump. Get it whipped out right in front of tens of thousands of fans through the sweeping rutted left. And then this part of the track, different from years past. We swing a right, join back onto the track that we normally go on. But as you'll see, a little bit different. Make that left. And then right here we saw in practice a big pileup taking out several of our top riders over the Lucas Oil step up. Make a left. This is a little bit different. You've got to step up, sharp right hander, get your weight back through these rollers. Then you'll pass the Fram mechanics area. One more right hand over the finish line jump. And that's a lap here. At Luckily, Lakewood. Elevation does not affect a GoPro Hero Cam, so we're going to show you what it looked like. Adam Cicerillo on board at practice earlier today. This is the section I was talking about. You can see the shadows. What? Just listen to the RPM. They rev these 250s. Keep that RPM up. This is that section that's a little bit different. Usually they'd be making a sharp left into this sharp right before the mechanics. So kind of cool how they've changed it up. Have a look at the pit board on the left here as you pass the frame mechanics area. These rights are getting deep. This track very technical. This is the finish line. Obviously everyone hoping to be the first one across that. But listen to RPM, just revving that 250 Kawasaki. This is going to be good, Jason. All right, what do you need to do to win here? Change the track conditions. Yep. We had rain all week, and uh, it's nice and dry, so the track has changed a lot. And I'm hoping these guys have hit the, the bike setting and then racing at altitude. The team, the, the riders, the mechanics, everyone working together and uh, trying to get the best package. As I said, you lose about 30% of your horsepower. And then the third one, will Jeremy Martin and can he rebound after some of the bad luck he had last week? If I'm going to take a guess, I'm going to say j -Mod. He'll be just fine today, but we got to wait and see. I'd almost be afraid of the guy. The last thing you want to do is get him angry. That's last year's 250 champion on the number one. Couldn't get the bike started. It was at this point one week ago. He was not even on the starting gate and had to come from dead last to uh, salvage a seventh overall. Let's go racing here at Thunder Valley. And Martin is going to grab your Motosport.com hole shot. Yes, he has revenge on the mind right behind him. Jesse Nelson on the 28. And Barbara Buscan, your series leader on the 25 on your left side, is third. So a bunch of contenders up front early. I think j has got a little uh, chip on his shoulder from last oh, week. Yeah. We said, how would he do? I figured this kid, he would rebound angrier, faster, and more determined than ever. And he's got the lead. But look at this. Jesse Nelson, Nelson gets to the bottom of that drop off. He's on the outside. He's going to have to go the long way around, but the rut's on his deep. He makes a little bobble. Martin holds it on. Some big bumps coming in that corner. That jostled Nelson around. Let's see if Muscan will be able to take second from him. No. Shuts the door on the other KTM rider. So Nelson still second. Muscan third. Zach Osborne, first really good start of the year. We've seen from Osborne in that white Husqvarna. He is fourth. And we also want to mention that Justin Hill, second overall last week at Glen Helen, big crash in practice, did not come to the gate here for this first moto. He is out for the day, so tough break for Hill. Well, a real tough break to mention. He landed another rider that was down. It was just due to a flag and not paying attention. Took a few guys down, so 
really a bummer for Justin Hill and of course KTM never want to see stuff like that happen we hope that he'll make a speedy recovery and be back with us next week and right now if you Marvin Moosecan he has the points lead he's got the red background on that number 25 but he really truly hasn't outridden J-Mart this season when yeah, they've they had it matched up they have it matched this up. way he's got one rider between him and j -Mart who can see it right in front of him. So if you're Marvin, you want to get around Jesse Nelson, who's no slouch. He's been uh, riding awesome and, in fact, was on the podium last week. Yep. So for Marvin, he wants to get around Nelson because he wants to go up to Jeremy Martin. He doesn't want j -Mart to get that confidence. Got a pair of Geico Honda riders, Hampshire and Smith, fifth and sixth. And working on them now, that's Joey Sabacci in the 37th degree bike. Kawasaki, he was very quick in practice. Sabachi's seventh right now. Yeah, you saw the uh, the 126 of uh, Jordan Smith there getting a little uh, what we call a fishtail coming through those uh, ruts by just uh, moving around a little bit. But he was uh, pulled it back, saved it on. Set it down to Georgia. What's happening down there? Alex Martin has pulled into the mechanics area. It looks like his whole shot device is stuck down. They just got it back up. And uh, they're taking off the, you know, the, the covers, the plastics right now, but it's headed straight back out. You know, that whole shot device at the beginning of a race keeps, you know, the suspension completely stuck down. It got stuck and they had to completely pull it apart to get it back up. He's just headed back out and past the finish line. So basically what Georgia is saying there is what these guys do is they, they lock their front suspension down. They pull down the forks so it looks more like a drag car where you got the front down, the rears up. That helps to prevent from wheeling, but the problem is they're connected to the fork guard and there's a button and if it doesn't release and it jabs, it's basically your suspension's almost like it's collapsed in the front. Yeah. That's a big issue on a track like this, especially these downhills and breaking up. CJ Mark bounces to the outside, just allows Nelson to catch up a couple more bike lengths. So the front few not separating at this point, you've seen a few mistakes from these guys. So this track is definitely a little bit different, Jason. I've noticed with the rain they had this week, they took a lot of that loose dirt off the top. It's a little more, uh, it's, it's not as deep and rutted as we've seen in the past, but it's a little more choppy. So I think it's caught some of these guys off and maybe just trying to get comfortable with the way the bike is moving out there. Yeah, kind of the natural surface is this hard clay, but they used to truck in a lot of sand. And they did again this year, but it's been 28 straight days of rain leading up to this race. So what you do, you fix a motocross track, you take the bulldozers and scrape all the mud off the top. That means you're generally scraping off all that really good soil. It's yeah. unridable. So you now you're down, down to the base. Yeah, yep. you can see on these sections they land. You can, basically, the shinier the dirt looks, the slicker it is. See those sections that come to turn? Do you see it's a little bit uh, brighter or lighter, if you want to call it that? And then they have to throw water on, like through here. And that's when you saw some of these guys really just swapping back and forth because there are still ruts out there. Trust me, this track is still rough. It's an AMA Motocross National brought to you by Lucas Oil. But for a national, it's not as rough as we've seen in the past. Yeah, well, this corner right here used to be pure sand. Now yeah. you can see it's just that hard, flat surface as they've scraped all the mud off. It's really impressive, though. Everyone was just anticipating a mudder here. That's not really a factor much at all as Nelson in second has lost a little bit of ground, about a second and a half to your leader, Jeremy Martin. Martin on the Yamalu Star Racing Yamaha. It's a Lucas Oil Troy Lee Designs KTM for Nelson and a Red Bull KTM for...